Hey everybody, here is a clip from a live stream reaction collaboration with Matthew's Music Studio. And he's playing for me uh, the band Nightwish and their song Ghost Love Score. And this is live from the Vakken Festival. It's my first time here in Nightwish, so let's get to it. Let's get going here. Um, I got a little bit longer one picked here for this next one. I hope that's all right with you. Sure. Um, this was actually a request in the chat, and this was actually also something that I was planning to do. It goes along with um, this whole um, vein of voice lessons. We're going to be reacting next to Nightwish Singer Reacts to Ghost Love Score, Vakken 2013. So we're going to get to see Floor uh, talking about uh, her performance at this legendary concert. We're going to get to hear the singer reacting to herself. Nice. So, without further ado, music teacher and Kyle Walls react to Nightwish Singer Reacts, the reaction to a reaction <laughs> <laughs> of Ghost Love Score Vodka 2013. Are you ready? And here we go. Hello and welcome to this reaction to a reaction video. It's maybe a new concept, but it would be really weird, I think, to react to a song I did myself. However, I'd like to let you know I've been enjoying a lot of the reaction videos out there. I think it's great that Ghost Love Score was picked up by the masses, really, and... Um, yeah, I just wanted to give you my personal insight behind this song. Now, I'm not going to run through the whole thing like in a, in a regular video, because what am I going to say? Oh, yeah, I remember doing this or that, or, uh, yeah, you know, it's me doing this uh, with, of course, my, my brothers in, in arms in Nightwish. So um, I'd like to kind of give you a, a bit of the technical behind the story kind of thing and maybe a couple of memories that pop up. We're going to listen to Ghost Love Score version of uh, Luck and Open Air. So that was 2013, it's quite a few years ago, but uh, as far as I know, it's one of your favorites. So that's why we go through this song. And I'm not gonna start right from the beginning, I'm gonna start where I start singing. And uh, well, I'll be reacting a little bit to that. There we go. drinking his beer. <laughs> of course. Okay. Um, first of all, buck and open air. 80,000 people in front of me. Yeah, I was a bit nervous. Uh, it was one of the biggest things uh, that I've ever done. And at that time, uh, the biggest thing. I knew we were recording it. Um, yeah, the, the, the pressure was so humongous and it was fantastic to just come out on stage and feel like the music just took over and we were going to play this song and, you know, of course this was towards the end. The whole show was just magic and I'm still so proud of how this song turned out. Um, now in this very beginning you have all the excitement that comes with this song, the anticipation of it, now we're going to do it. But still I need to sing quite little. I can't just run! it has to it has to be delicate so that would be one of the biggest challenges to kind of get all those feelings into singing the right words and the right with the right emotion without overdoing it and um yeah that comes with a lot of control yeah. both up here a little bit of an echo Kyle. because i don't want it to sound too uh, okay. massive it needs to start delicate and light uh, and from there we go into this part Well, there I really go into this this operatic voice without making it too too round, too operatic. Uh, it's a bit of a lighter touch of like the head voice, um, which I found very fitting to um, to the song. Of course, in the original, that's also used. But I I've been trying to give different kinds of colors to the different emotions and part of the story in this song. Um, and so here. I try to not make it too operatic, but with a nice touch there. And um, yeah, for me, this is one of the favorite parts of the song, really. It's, it's yeah, it just gives me the goosebumps to sing it. You can even sing it in the beginning where I just close my eyes and 
let it come out. It's uh, uh, a joy to sing. We continue. I just love the way that Empu comes by and just touches everybody in a small little gesture. Um, that's something you don't rehearse. That's something not made. That just happens. And that vibe and feeling is it's very precious. Um, actually, in the singing way, it, it continues in a, in a delicate balance between expression and not too heavy singing. So I want to really tell the story and use a lot of dynamics and shifts in vocal styles and types to, to color as you hear um, and maybe also that the second time that this, this, these long notes come over the choir part, um, I start singing a little bit stronger uh, and a little bit less operatic unless I go until I go to end, towards the end uh, to the blue memory where, where I really power up a little bit to then put the brakes back on and just slide into the next tiny part that comes now. Shout out Andy. <laughs> input to just stop the solo wonderful to see the crowd also i mean i'm reacting to what i'm singing but i'm also reacting to how, how you guys were out there in the audience just feeling it with me that interaction despite the huge distance that we have on on huge festivals like wakken where yeah there's a big part of me if, in front of me of stage and then there's a barrier and security and um yeah, then thanks to the cameras, you can actually uh, see you even more, see how, how everybody's feeling it, because this song is feeling its emotion. And uh, um, what I also noticed that's maybe funny to tell is that throughout the years, I did start singing a little bit different as I, as I did uh, in 2013. Um, different nuances. It's, it's small things, really, uh, but the biggest... Uh, thing for me in telling the story of, of this part of the song is constantly playing between the dynamics a little bit fuller voice more chest voice more light head voice and uh, really try to speak the words so you hear what I'm saying without exaggerating so that it becomes just technical and uh, yeah, I mean, when it comes to that, this song is really challenging, and that's also why it's cool to react to this and, and go through through the whole thing with you guys. If I may go back in time with you, 2013, uh, first time Wacken Open Air with Nightwish. Um, I already told you I was really, really, really nervous, but um, I, I have very fond memories of just being there and... Um, uh, the enthusiasm of the audience and the way that everything just came together on that stage that night, I think you can still feel it in, in the video of this song and in our DVD made of that entire show uh, that night. And uh, I will cherish that forever. I'm so grateful that there is such a 
you know, memory of this. It's immortalized, as I said it on stage, uh, like it is. Okay, we, uh, we just jump over the beautiful uh, instrumental and uh, continue. more expression, more power. Um, it repeats itself twice uh, and it builds up instrumentally. There's a difference between the first and the second time. And also vocally, I want to emphasize that dynamic change by, uh, well, powering up even more. And um, yeah, it just has this really nice groove and feel to it. That's really, yeah, I want to pick that up in the vocals too. And um, yeah. We continue into the next part. That was um, a little bit of heavy opera singing along with the choir um, and a very expressive, almost theatrical, um, okay, <laughs> the dog just sat on the light. All right, a little bit of opera, very dramatic, very almost theatrical uh, part in the song where expression and power just needs to be there. and. Um, uh, yeah, you can really feel that the whole song is building up. I'm shifting from a very strong operatic voice to a full uh, chest voice or belting voice. Before I continue talking about this particular version of uh, uh, Ghost Love Score, I have to take you back in time before this actually was recorded and, and to how the ending of the song came to be, because it was a spontaneous thing. I don't know if I, I must have told you in, in an interview here or there, but um, before I joined Nightwish, this was always already one of my favorite songs. And I always heard things in the end that I kind of sang along. If I, if I ever sang along with a song, it kind of freestyled into that direction of what it became. And um, as soon as I started to uh, get more comfortable on stage and knowing the songs uh, with Nightwish, I started to kind of freestyle during the, uh, uh, the rehearsals during the day or like with sound checks and stuff and um, at some point I just went for it and it, I didn't do that before because I didn't feel comfortable enough with with what I was doing myself nobody was holding me back or anything but as soon as I started you know freestyling the rest of the band was like that's kind of cool we can try that tonight on the show and so I did and one of the first times I uh, I really sang it was in South America um, with that first tour we did together and it just exploded. Everybody loved it and it, it, it sort of fell into place and it became my own version of the song as a natural development into, into this song. And um, I know now many years later it really became such a thing that, you know, some, those love scores for always on our set list. Um, and I think that's that's super cool. So uh, we'll continue into the 2013 uh, version of the Wacken Show. Once again, a, different, a lot of different voices are used. It's a powerful opera on those ha, ha, ha 
to get the timing right was a little bit of practicing because you, you really, really want to just do that right. And now it's just embedded in my system. Um, but powerful opera needs to be pushed out immediately. And from that energy back into redeem me, it's almost a little bit low for me, like below where my, my power is in my voice. Um, and it shouldn't be powered, so it needs to have that exact... Uh, dynamics without it sounding too uh, thin uh, and then once again building up towards the end where it's just a full belt that kind of introduces that last part that became so famous let's write that one out can really miss this stuff damn yeah there's something about that note that just I always feel it always how often I may hear it or sing it it just oof. um I kind of visualized because <laughs> in the beginning I, I I keep it a little bit smaller and then on that long note, I build it up full force opera with everything I have. And then comes the tricky part to switch from that operatic voice on the same height to a full belting voice. That I personally always find a little bit exciting because you really want to have it right. You don't want the, the voice to kind of... Uh, and uh, of course, when the high note comes, uh, it, it needs to come. It's only cool when it's really there. And um, I'm no machine, so it's, it doesn't just always happen. Um, but I do remember one show in particular, we, we have some DVD material from that, uh, that was in Colombia. We played uh, uh, a show there and we were going to record everything for DVD, we recorded a lot of it, um, but I became sick and my voice was basically gone. During the day I had high fevers and my whole body was basically shutting down and um, yeah, it was really like let's see how how it's gonna be because uh if you can barely stand without feeling like that of the fever then how are you gonna perform a two-hour show and there's something that just happens uh troy in our band calls it dr theater that comes up uh that and uh, a, a bunch of pills to uh, you know suppress the the fever and all of that uh made us go on stage and then the energy of course of the crowd oh, i started to feel much better that didn't magically fix my voice though um it was still um having a hard time with with uh, especially with the high belting notes so this song was was really like oh, let's see how it's gonna be like and this belting note in the end is basically one of the highest stuff that i have to belt out so and it's it's at the very end of the show so you're always already tired of doing everything else and you still have to have enough to have it which is extra hard when you're sick but it's it felt like my body just knew what to do and as soon as this note came it just said yes i can do this and there it was as powerful as it would have been when i'm not sick and it felt like wow i don't know where that comes from in my body but yeah it's it's a really fond memory of yeah, just getting this out even under more challenging sub, uh, circumstances. Um, so yeah, it's wonderful to see how, how this note just oof, came out and um, how it just puts, puts, up, puts a spell on everybody in the crowd. It, it has something special, the way this song just builds up and, and continues after that. Ah, oh, wonderful. Uh, on that note, I'm going to thank you for watching this reaction video. I... Um, 
I really, really look forward to performing this live, live for you guys. But um, we still have a pandemic to sit out, so let's let's keep uh, keep our sanity for a little while longer and our good health. Um, in just a little while, um, we have this Nightwish virtual show coming up, and uh, as we are preparing, I can tell you it's going to be as magical as Nightwish can be. Uh, I really think it's going to be something special, and uh, I hope we can meet each other at least virtually there. And uh, well, until next time, though, in the real life, <laughs> on the real stage with Ghost Love Score, thank you for watching and take care. Bye. <laughs>she used her floorgasm that's 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 what the fans call that that uh, part at the end that she was just talking about that super high note yeah she used that for her little outro screen now that's freaking awesome that's cool yeah dude that's really cool i i didn't start singing till i had played guitar for a few decades before i even really thought i could try to sing and uh i i'm a teacher so the choir teacher and I, we were going to trade lessons. He's going to do vocal lessons. I was going to do guitar. The first time we met, he, we were going through guitar and he was like, yeah, I, I, I don't have patience for guitar. So we did some vocal lessons together. And that really got me going on the right path because I wasn't in, in, in choir in school. I mentioned that. So when our, she's talking about, uh, you know, belting and stuff, and, and the switches of, you know, head and chest voice, switching register and stuff. I always like hearing singers do that because, you know, it's something, you know, I every time I perform, I'm always trying to get a little bit better, stretch myself in some way. And when she's talking about things like that and then dealing with being sick or, you know, because uh, I, I have asthma and trying to sing with asthma, that's always uh, sketchy. Just wondering what, what your thoughts were on her talking about belting and, and uh, you know, switch, switching up her voice like that. Oh, absolutely. What we're going to talk about here is the, the, mainly the reason why I picked that from the request list for, for my, my rotation was because I wanted you, with as good of a singer as you are, um, to, to have this experience of not only listening to Floor um, and probably her most popular recording, um, but also getting her to hear you know, her thoughts about it because she's such an exceptional <coughs> teacher uh, as well as a performer. And um, she explains it so beautifully. Um, so in my paraphrase of her words from uh, her master classes, belting, it's like, it's like you're eating an apple. So you take and you, <sighs> and it gives that nasal, um, pharyngeal area in the nose a chance to really open up and yeah. it gives some of that like eh, kind of sound okay now one of the things about belting is it, when you're belting you got to be careful not to let your larynx rise unless that's the sound you're going for so what i'm talking about is my my voice box right here the little v okay yeah if you if if you raise your larynx, it makes it sound like this, and if you lower your larynx, it makes it sound like that. So basically, she's coming from that operatic form where the jaws drop all the way, as if she was saying "oh," and um and while she's doing that, she's got her larynx down, so it's not just "ah," oh, but it's "oh," and then she's got to kind of switch. From that ah to that ah, biting the apple mouth. Yeah. Right? So she's going from hoo, 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 to ah. <clears throat> <laughs> I yeah. do not have the voice to the freaking sound <laughs> anything like floor. So, yeah. you know, I'm, well, I'm a humble vocal coach here. Well, those Germanic languages have, uh, you know, it's part of the pronunciation that you use your chest voice you know, for those guttural sounds of the vowels that, you know, in English, we have that French influence. So, you know, um, especially being in the Midwest, so some things when we say vowels, you know, like father, you know, kind of comes out my nose when I say they are dad. It's an but, American thing, American. Right. <laughs> it's always funny when I, I go, go, 
go to different places. Uh, but to me, my St. Louis accent really comes out when I say chocolate. Yeah, and I can't really control it, but chocolate. It's like, man. (laughs) Thanks again for watching this reaction collaboration. If you have more ideas for reactions, let me know in the comments. See you next time.